Thank you for joining our webinar today. My name is Dave Jackson, Chief Executive of ClickTools. Today I'm going to describe in some detail the feedback program we've established at ClickTools as a vehicle for sharing how we think companies should go about building a journey-based voice of the customer program. I'll share information about how we've designed the program, the way we deploy surveys and how we report results and drive feedback into action. I'll try and tell our story warts and all and I want to make it clear that it remains a work in progress. We still have much to do and I'll talk a little bit about our plans to develop the program further. First, for those of you who don't know ClickTools, a few words about what we do. We provide software that enables companies to collect information at all stages of the customer journey. Surveys is where we started our business and it remains the biggest single reason people purchase ClickTools. But now ClickTools is used beyond surveys. Many of our largest customers use ClickTools for gathering customer information through web forms and course scripts right across the customer journey. One of our great strengths is CRM integration. We have the most advanced, the easiest to use and the most flexible point and click CRM integration. And we connect to the, most of the leading SaaS CRM providers, Salesforce.com, Oracle CRM On Demand, Sugar CRM and Microsoft Dynamics CRM. And we built this functionality because we fundamentally believe in the immense benefits that come from a single view of the customer. In the presentation, I'm going to talk a little bit about ClickTools and our program, but I want to start with a bit of scene setting. We are in the business and we have some very bright guys that know about surveys, reporting, statistics and the like. They help our customers all the time, so we have that resource to call upon. That said, it's often a challenge to get hold of them because they're customer facing and involved in customer projects most of the time. We are total believers in and heavy users of CRM. At ClickTools we use Salesforce and we have done since being five people. In fact Salesforce and add-ons like Financial Force, Financial Force PSA and Marketo is our sole business system. We use Salesforce for marketing, for sales, for support and with the add-ons, accounting and management of professional services projects. Some of these add-ons are quite new and we're still getting used to them. Finally, customer experience is very important to our business and more than that, it's a personal passion. My background is in customer experience consulting and management development. My first involvement with the subject dates back to 1989 and yes, I am that old. But I can't imagine why anyone would want to run a business that does not bend over backwards to do what's necessary for customers. I cringe any time I see or hear any of my staff doing something that's not right for the customer. Fortunately, that is very rare. We are far from perfect, but rarely can the not be bothered epithet be labelled on us. About our feedback program, we were a real case of cobbler's children. Our feedback program was frankly poor. Much of it was ad hoc. Different teams and departments did their own thing. Surveys used different scales, different questions for the same subject. Other than the word around the office, there was no formal co coordination. Each survey was okay in its own right, we didn't send out bad surveys, and each survey was acted on where appropriate. But it was far from a coordinated program that was systematically used to guide business decisions. We also face the usual arguments and objections about investing in voice of the customer. We're too small. We talk to customers regularly. And we did. So we know what they want. But the problem is they don't often want to tell you to your face what they really think. We have other priorities and any company does. But we do believe in customer experience and it is therefore vital that we transformed our program into something that was not just good for the business but could become a showcase for what we actually do for our own customers. The starting point for our feedback program was these five design principles. Gathering feedback and other customer information not only forms the customer experience, sorry, not only informs the customer experience, it's a vital part of it. It has therefore to be a positive experience in its own right. And we seek to achieve this by good design, relevance and by truly listening to what customers say. The second point about providing a continuing customer's perspective for decisions is perhaps the most important. The feedback we collect has to shape the decisions we make and I'll give some examples of this later in the presentation. 
Our program has a real financial focus. We believe that if we do the right things for customers, we'll make our company a better fit for your needs and retain more of the hard-won customers. And the second part of this is that the program must not be time-consuming to administer. The time should be spent on gaining insights and taking action to improve the customer experience, not on sending out surveys or regular reporting. And finally, as we're in the business, as I mentioned, this program should showcase our best practices. Just to expand that context, this is our operating model and something I share with all our staff. The red areas are where our Voice of the Customer program contributes to understanding our performance. And as you can see, there's a great deal of alignment, and that's not accidental. Our operating model is founded on a recognition of the absolutely central role of a great customer experience, and our Voice of the Customer program has to support that. Without this red thread, we'd have an incoherent organisation. Staff will be confused about what really matters and why, and we can't afford that. I don't think any business can. Recognise that there's a great deal of freedom of choice when designing a feedback programme. But there are always two vital anchors and these should be the first things to be considered. Number one is to understand what customers value. It grounds the programme in an outside-in perspective. That sounds easy, but it's surprising how many people in businesses get this wrong. The biggest mistake is to assume that they know what customers want and don't test their assumptions. The second anchor is the results end of the programme. Who in the company needs to know what to take the actions that will drive the improvements, generate retention and advocacy and therefore improve financial performance? Representatives of these people should be consulted about the programme, but I would caution against design by committee. We had one person develop the core of the programme, seeking input on proposed surveys, deployment rules and the core reporting. Teams responsible for each touch point could then extend the reporting in their area where they wished and they're responsible for picking up the results and taking action. But that one person, that one single coherent thread was important in successful design. The starting point for that, as I mentioned, for the design of our program is the customer journey, as you can see in this slide here. We call it See, Try, Buy, Use. Our goal is to have a design customer experience for each of the major touch points. And the chart shows the information we collect at these different stages. And the red items are the feedback surveys we have implemented as part of this Voice of the Customer program. We expanded that view into this, into, to populate this design template. And it's a design template that we've used ourselves, but we also provide to customers. And if you'd like a copy of it, please ask. It's an aid memoir to the key questions and allows us to build an outline design before committing it to technical build. As it has everything on one page, it's easy for people to see how the program will work and therefore give constructive comments. And it's a great way to get everyone to have their say early in the process. One outcome of the design template is what we call the survey suite. What surveys are to be implemented and how do they relate to the customer journey? We've implemented seven to cover all the customer journey, but as you can see from this chart, the emphasis is on use. This is where we meet our existing customers, the ones, the people who are most important to us. Yes, we're interested in the views of our prospective customers and the wider market, but we believe, we believe success is predicated on solving the challenges faced by our customers. That's why most feedback activity is focused on them. And I'll talk later about how we avoid over-surveying the customer base. To minimise the cost of running the programme, we have automated the majority of surveys in the programme based on state changes in our CRM system. These triggers issue personalised email invitations with the survey link embedded. When the survey is completed, the data is passed into our CRM system in real time using our own integration technology. And a combination of CRM-based cases and activities and click tools alerts trigger any follow-up of dissatisfied customers. Note that action is an integral part of our Voice of the Customer process and it's something we've thought about from the beginning, not something that we added to our thinking at the end of the programme. We've architected our surveys as one click tools master subset. It's an approach to the, of the technology that we've got. This allows us to use common questions where that's appropriate 
and makes it easier to drive comparative reporting across all stages of the customer journey. So far the survey is only in English, but we will add additional languages next year. One feature of the survey, and you'll see this later, is the exit page. It gives instant feedback on the results so that the customer is in no doubt how they scored us. And again, I'll expand on this bit later. All of our questions use a 10 point scale, sorry, a 0 to 10 point scale. This gives us sufficient granularity of results and it allows us to benchmark MPS if we choose to. We also use um, the calculations built into Click Tools Analytics to drive some of our reporting. All of the surveys contain four questions which measure different aspects of loyalty. And whilst we track these individually, we also group these four questions together to create what we call the Click Tools Customer Experience Index. It's what we are adapting, ad, sorry, adopting as our one number. We use Click Tools Analytics question grouping to automate the aggregation of the results here. Because we've captured the type of survey as one of the hidden questions, we can track the impact of each event across our customer journey on overall performance. And we can compare that to uh, transaction volumes, to spend, um, to um, overall satisfaction. It's too soon to say if any one event has a disproportionate effect, but it is something that we are monitoring. The survey invitation is simple. This example is from the onboarding survey, which is issued to new customers 60 days after they signed up for Click Tools. Where appropriate, we also include event information, for example, a case number and subject to provide contextually rich survey invitation. This helps response rates and shows respect to our customers. It shows that we've listened. What you can't see on this page is the opt-out options lower down the page. We set up separate survey and marketing opt-outs in our CRM records and the opt-out is automatically populated in CRM and workflow rules are set to enforce that opt-out. This is how the survey itself looks when presented to customers. Irrespective of the type of survey, the structure is the same. Two groups of questions, an event specific group and a set of common questions each of which is followed by a comment and a dynamic exit page. For example, the onboarding survey tests four experience attributes covering functionality, understanding your needs, being easy to do business with and value for money. And the text preceding the comment box changes based on the pattern of scores. The second set of questions, the common questions. And again, the text preceding the comment changes based on the pattern of responses. The dynamic exit page is, I think, unique. It plays back to respondents the scores and comments, giving them the opportunity to go back and change them if they want. This is an extra step, but we think it will help improve the reliability of results. This page also includes a link to email directly if the customer is dissatisfied. I want customers to know that this really matters to me personally, and it isn't just lip service. As I said earlier, one of our design criteria was to remove the administrative effort from the program. And we do this by exploiting the integration functionality of Click Tools. One of the methods we use is CRM workflow, and here's one example. In this case, the closed case survey. This triggers the survey when the case is closed, checks to make sure that the opt-out is not applied, and then sends an email invitation with the survey embedded and with the personalizations included. The second approach we use is Click Tools Schedule Deployment. This is used for the onboarding survey, which is sent out after 60 days, and the relationship survey, which is sent out annually on the anniversary, nine months after their purchase. This enables us to set up a, a CRM report that defines the participants for the survey, and that survey is issued then every day. So we don't issue surveys in large batches, but we do have a continuous flow of feedback coming into the business. We're also increasingly using social media as a way of communicating with our customers. And communication is a two-way street. So for us, this includes gathering in feedback and information from them via the social media. If you want to look at an example of this from uh, our Facebook page, go and visit uh, www.facebook.com forward slash click tools. And you can see quite a few examples of mechanisms we use for gathering information in this way. This chart sets out the approach we use to deploy the different surveys. As I mentioned earlier, all of the surveys are driven automatically. The only exception to that is the project survey that's currently done manually. 
PSA is something we've implemented fairly recently, um, and we're still getting to grips with some of the, um, the implications of that, and one of which is identifying the most appropriate trigger to send out the survey. But certainly by the end of this year, once we've got PSA experience under our belt, we will also automate the deployment of that survey. As you can see, there's a balance between CRM workflow and click to schedule deployment. An important piece for us is always enhancing the single voice of the customer. It's vital to us that whenever anyone interacts with a customer, they can see the complete picture. And part of that for us is feedback, an important part of it. We've created a custom object for ClickTools feedback in our CRM system. This object has, what, has got what's called record types. It's a slightly different object for each survey type. And the survey results when they come back into Click Tools are automatically associated with the contact, the account and the event that triggered it. So again we've got the relationship between the feedback and what's caused it to be um, generated. This allows us to generate rich reporting not just in Click Tools but also in CRM. More importantly the approach is designed to enable us to examine the relationships between feedback and other customer data without having to resort to spreadsheets. We know how we're going to do this. At the moment, there's insufficient data for us to draw reliable conclusions, um, but we'll publish those later on in the year when we've got a um, richer data set. One of the real benefits of integration is to make that customer view known to staff that deal with the customer. This is why we associate the results of each survey with the respondent, so that when staff are dealing with customers, they can see instantly how they feel about us. And I expect staff to use this information to shape their interactions and their conversations. If we've screwed up and customers given us poor feedback, let's apologise. If they scored highly, thank them for their support. But by making this information easily available in everything we do every day, we can reinforce our customer-focused culture. We also summarise the information by account, so we can view across multiple contacts in a single customer. And we're starting to use this to plan and refine our campaign targeting and our account management activity. As you all know, there's no point in gathering feedback if you don't plan to act upon it. In fact, if feedback's not part of your VOC process design, don't even start. You'll only waste money and, more importantly, you'll annoy customers. They provide feedback in the expectation, or in some cases the hope, that it will be acted upon give them the respect and take that action. We drive feedback into action through a series of alerts using click tools to prompt staff to act. This is an example, it's what we call the account at risk an alert. So if a customer scores any of the core questions below a certain threshold, the account management team receive an email with the survey information embedded and instructions to follow up. And at the same time, an activity is created against the contact in CRM using ClickTools logic flow integration. So not only have they got the inbox, when they go and do their work in CRM, there's a reminder there, there's an activity to follow up a dissatisfied customer. This is the email that our account management team received for the customer alert, risk alert. And as I said, in addition, we can track any follow-up activity through activity reports in CRM. This alert has proved its worth already. One customer gave us a low score to con on continuing to do business with us. The account management team contacted the company, resolved the issue, which was down to some misunderstanding of pricing, and we've secured that customer. And as you can see, every survey has performance-based alert, which will drive action in case of any form of dissatisfaction. And in all cases, an alert is, takes two forms an email to the team responsible, and an action in CRM. We use a combination of click tools and CRM for reporting, although the primary vehicle is CRM. You might think that's strange that a company that provides feedback-based reporting tools as part of its product uses CRM reporting. But don't forget the information that we're reporting on in CRM has been driven into there from click tools. And I don't want staff having to use multiple systems where their natural home for everything they do is CRM. And we can mix the two mechanisms together. So this screenshot is from actually from our demo suite, as the real information has got live customer data on it, and I won't share that. 
Um, but it shows here how we combine both click tools reporting elements and Salesforce reporting elements in a Salesforce dashboard. So that gives us the best of both worlds. And it's another example of our integration capability. This is an example of some of the reporting that we do out of click tools. In this case, this is around the closed case survey. And it's part of Safe Cadres, who's our support manager, weekly review with his team. In terms of de designing reporting, here are a few things to think about. Remember the design scope picture from the beginning of the presentation. It's important to think about reporting right from the start. The question, who needs to know what to do what, is key, particularly the to do what. By addressing reporting needs early on, you can ensure that you've built the necessary demographic data extracts and embedded these within your survey. As I say, we use ClickTools CRM integration capability to simplify this. And ClickTools maintains the links between the data elements when it passes the feedback back into CRM. Report preparation can be automated, either through ClickTools or CRM in dashboards. This is important because it frees up time for the added value activity, which is understanding and acting upon the data. We used to provide lots of data to people, and it only complicated their work. Now we just supply them with the information which is specific to their role. It makes it much easier for them to focus on what they can change and not worry about what they can't or shouldn't do. That doesn't mean they can't go and look at other results. It just means that we don't drive the results into them as a way of reinforcing their focus. Finally, recognize that feedback's only one element of your management information. From the start, work with your data guys to ensure that the structure of the feedback you're collecting fits with your broader measurement approach. This is particularly important if you're looking at exploiting linkage analysis, when comparing apples and apples is, is particularly important. The basis of our reporting is top two box, promoters in the NPS parlance. We measure that as a spot, monthly, and a three-month rolling average statistic, and this combination allows us to look at data that both smooths out occasional blips, but also lets us to see if something specific is happening within the month. That spot gives us the potential to look to consider early warning. These measures are done at the individual and ev event level, where each survey is owned by a member of the management and executive teams. We also produce a journey stage comparison to see if there are any standout areas or problem areas. And we do key driver analysis of the customer experience index, looking at the individual components alongside experience attributes. Of course, I've said several times, the only reason we gather feedback is to act on it. Through alerts, we follow up with individual customers who've scored as low. And I expect the teams who receive an alert to do that follow-up within 24 hours of receiving it. I've shared with you a customer at risk alert, and we report on this number also. Teams look at the results as part of their weekly team meetings and look to see what process changes, if any, are needed. An important part of our customer experience is the product itself. So we mine the results of the feedback to look for ideas for product improvements. And our product manager gets access to those results. And the headline numbers are part of the executive dashboard, which is issued automatically twice a week. And that dashboard includes financials, pipeline data, sales data, as well as the customer experience index. Here are some headline results. Our customer experience index mean score is 9.45 out of 10. I am proud of that. Our net promoter score is 54, which is good but needs to be improved. Remember, the customer experience index is an aggregation of the four key questions that are included in every survey. The customer experience index, by the way, forms the basis of a part of our company bonus. So what have we done as a result of our feedback? Well, the most significant and the very significant investment we're making at the moment is in upgrading our user interface, the user experience. Feedback told us that this was an issue for many customers. And through the win-loss survey, we also knew that it was costing us business. So we've put significant effort into that and watched this space for something in the very near future. Close case surveys show that when customers contact support, they do a great job most of the time. The feedback, however, clearly shows that they want better self-service tools. 
As a result, we're now testing an online portal with improved self-help content and the ability for customer-to-customer -customer help and support. And again, that's scheduled to be issued in the very near future. And I mentioned already that only last month we got a relationship survey that showed a customer was considering leaving, leaving us. And we've put that right. There are many things we still have to do. Implementing professional service administration has taken longer than expected and we've not yet automated that survey. That will be complete later this year. We're working on some new functionality that will allow ClickTools users to, to search the Twitter sphere for comments and pass those into CRM. Extending the voice of the customer into social media is a very important part of the future developments. In a recent blog, Rose Cruz, our product manager, described how to generate a tweet from a customer comment. And I want to implement that in our program too. And we will extend the program, notably by adding a feedback link in the application itself on every page so a customer can give us instant feedback on any aspect of the application. We're planning to use the technology that we're trialling, the Twitter Sphere search, um, and pushing that directly into CRM, what we call tweet to case. And finally, as we build up sufficient data, we have plans to build a rich linkage model that relates customer experience index and customer lifetime value. We'll be able to do this by customer segment on different dimensions. And the great thing is we'll be able to do all of this in CRM without reference to external spreadsheets. This will make reporting uh, and acting upon that data much easier. So what have we learned? Well, our first attempts at feedback, as I said, were unco uncoordinated and essentially internally focused. It needs to be externally focused. It needs to focus on what matters to customers. And that sounds simple, but it's easy to confuse what matters to customers with what we think what matters to customers. We need to periodically reevaluate this as we develop. It's a bit like chopping the top of an iceberg. You think you've solved one issue, then another one appears. Well, customer needs change also, so we need to continually revise that view. As a small company, we don't have a lot of resources, so we needed to automate as much as possible so we could focus on the important things. This also, by the way, has the added advantage of removing selection bias. People now don't have a choice about who's surveyed. That's taken care of automatically. And even in a company whose business is feedback, I have to keep reinforcing why it matters. I do this by making it central to the company bonus and by constantly referring to the need to keep customers to the fore. I also, by the way, use results of feedback, particularly positive feedback, to reinforce um, success messages to members of the organisation individually. And finally, I encourage you to have a vision, not just for feedback, but for your customer experience and how feedback fits within that. Form that vision early on, but recognise that you're going to get there step by step. Don't try and do all of it at the first attempt. You'll probably not be able to do everything that you want straight away. Well, that's how we've gone about changing our feedback programme from something that was very internally focused and fragmented into what I think is a very robust comprehensive feedback program. If you have any questions, drop me a mail, david.jackson at clicktools.com, or speak to one of your account managers, and we'd be happy to help you and share more information about how we've built these sorts of programs, not just for ourselves, but for other people as well. So thank you very much for your time, and hopefully see you on a future ClickTools webinar.